From common prosperity to widespread unemployment, the collapse of China's social contract has come to the surface. It's estimated that 296 million workers in China are facing slow wage growth. New college graduates have difficulty finding jobs. The urban middle class has suffered heavy losses in the real estate crisis. The wealthy are reeling from authorities' crackdowns on the internet, finance, and medical industries. Not to mention, China's national security regulations have worried foreign companies, causing many of them to have stopped investing in the country. However, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, still claims that everything is going according to plan. In the past, the CCP allowed people to make money in exchange for indifference to their political freedoms. But now, its social contract has shifted from the economic growth and opportunity of the past to vague promises of security and a good life. The Financial Times reported that a young man, Zhou, working in Beijing, said, I don't know who is to blame for the economic recession, but I only know that the economy is terrible this year. There are layoffs everywhere. Zhou's job was to create fake cash flows to set up shell companies for struggling small business owners, who then used those shell companies to borrow new debt and pay off old ones. But even this development business, thought to be well-suited to the economic downturn, has been weighed down by China's economic slowdown. Last month, Zhou's revenue dropped to a fraction of last year's levels. He plans to return to his hometown in Hunan and sell organic eggs. The CCP lost popularity and imposed a social contract on the Chinese people. A commentary on Radio Free Asia said that since the June 4th movement in 1989, the CCP has been implementing an unwritten social contract. The government provides people with a stable life, and in exchange, people must pay the price of political freedom. The contract under Hu Jintao's administration was, I would not torment you. You could live your life in peace, but I would decide whether or how much political rights you had, such as speech, publishing, association, etc. In the past 10 years, since Xi Jinping came to power, under the influence of internal and external factors, people have had neither fortune nor peace. Especially after three years of the COVID-19 pandemic, not only have people lost their most basic personal freedoms, but their daily lives have also been controlled everywhere. The commentary emphasized that the CCP imposed a social contract between the party and the Chinese people, which was a compromise that the people had to make. George Magnus, author of Red Flags, Why Xi's China is in Jeopardy, and a research associate at the University of Oxford's China Center, told the Financial Times that this agreement has been undermined, and not just by the fact that China's old development model is not really working anymore but also by the government's own culpability for not addressing the issues. Fundamentally, it's an issue of trust. From common prosperity to widespread unemployment, in August 2021, Xi Jinping delivered a speech on common prosperity at the CCP's Central Financial and Economic Committee meeting. Xi said officials must resolutely oppose the unrestricted expansion of capital and insist on the dominant position of the public sector while also maintaining a certain way to mobilize entrepreneurial enthusiasm. These speeches announced that past reform plans were in vain. Beijing revised the anti-monopoly law to curb internet giants like Alibaba and implemented regulatory measures on the education industry. After Xi Jinping entered his third term, he launched a severe crackdown on the Chinese economy under his new staff. These measures have weakened the industry's growth potential and its ability to provide employment. Therefore, it becomes harder for young people to find jobs. In August this year, the Chinese government released shocking data showing that the urban unemployment rate for Chinese citizens aged 16 to 24 reached a record high of 21.3%. After that, the authorities quickly decided to suspend the publication of urban youth unemployment data. The latest news is that the authorities are shifting their attention from the real estate industry to the financial industry to root out corruption. The Wall Street Journal quoted people familiar with the matter as saying that Xi Jinping made it clear in a meeting in September that he hoped to spare no effort to rectify China's real estate industry and that he would continue to fight corruption to the end, even if it drags down overall economic growth. The so-called anti-corruption campaign is just an instrument the Communist Party wants to use to purge everyone who is not loyal, says Xu Chenggang, 
a senior research scholar at Stanford University's Center on China's Economy and Institutions. Economic pressure is causing more friction in Chinese society. Money is fleeing at an accelerated pace as people seek safe havens. There is widespread public anger over official corruption, and anger among the middle class is growing. Citizen resistance activities, such as the blank paper movement, have also been breaking out. On November 3rd, China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange said that direct investment liabilities in China's balance of payments decreased by $11.8 billion in the third quarter. This is the first time this indicator of foreign investment in China has turned negative since records began in 1998. The International Investment Immigration Company said that in 2023, China will have 13,500 high net worth individuals with investable wealth exceeding $1 million to emigrate this year. Neil Thomas, a fellow at the Asia Society Policy Institute's Center for China Analysis, told the Financial Times, the tragedy of Xi Jinping's economic policy is that he has identified some problems China needs to fix, but has gone about it the wrong way.